we've been looking at binomial expansions well, that brings us to the binomial theorem. It's actually a very simple theorem. It's simply that. If we expand out 1 plus x to the power of n, it equals nc0 plus nc1x plus nc2x squared, and so on and so on, up to the very last term, ncn x to the n. So in fact, it's exactly what we've seen as a binomial expansion. But when it is the specific one, 1 plus x to the power, we call this the binomial theorem. We can write it in some notation. Our general term that we would substitute into then is nck x to the power of k. Because what we saw was in the binomial coefficients, the k always matches the power of the term. And we're summing from 0 to n, because the first one is when it's k is equal to 0, then k equals 1, k equals 2, and we go all the way up to n. Remember, nck is exactly what we saw in combinations, n factorial and k factorial, n minus k factorial. So if ever you need to go back to factorial notation, that's our formula. It also means we should end up with n plus 1 terms when we expand out because we're starting at 0 and going up to n. So we should always end up with n plus 1 terms. Now that's very limited, just having 1 plus x. So we can extend it out to other ones where it's a and b. And the only difference is now that a and b, well, the two powers will always add up to be, uh, well, n. So b to the power of k, a to the power of n minus k, depending on what k we're substituting in. So all right, let's imagine we haven't got our calculators, we have to work out 11c4. Then we go back to factorial notation, and that would be 11 factorial on 4 factorial, 7 factorial. So again, the two numbers on the bottom will always add up to be the number on top. But remembering what factorials are, if you roll out those factorials, 11 factorial is 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 and so on down to 1. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 7 factorial, 7 times 6 times 5 times... It means there's going to be cancelling happening. So you always get the bigger factorial on the bottom, which in this case is 7 factorial. Cancel it with the factorials in the top, and I end up with this. 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 on 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. There should always be cancelling happening because your binomial coefficients are always whole numbers. You won't end up with a fraction. So when I look at this one, well, the first thing I see is, well, four twos are eight. So I can cancel those out. Uh, well, three goes into nine three times. So I now know I've got 11 times 10 times three, 330. But hopefully we've got our calculators and we can save ourselves a bit of time and just plug that in. But we do need to know the definition should we get something like this. Find the value of n so that nc5 equals nc8. Now, if you remember the Pascal's triangle relationship about the symmetry, we can get the answer very quick. Because again, the two numbers down the bottom should add to be the number on the top. So the 8 and 5 should give me 13. Remember, nck equals nc n minus k. That was the relationship. So in this case, I can say, all right, well, 8 must be n minus 5, 13. Or as I say, the two numbers on the bottom should add together to give the one on the top. n is 13. This also uses one of Pascal's triangles relationship. This is the one that's basically saying to get any number, then you add the two numbers in the row above it. So if I'm getting 20C8, and I've added NC7 and NC8, well, the row above must have been the 19th row. So N should turn out to be 19. So it's coming from this one. N minus 1 CK plus N minus 1 CK minus 1 is N C K. So yeah, that one would be 90. But if you ever forgot those, you'd go back to factorial notation. Gives you something a little bit more tricky to solve, but you, you could get the answer. So we have to find a particular term in an expansion. I don't want to expand the whole thing out. All I'm interested in is what is the fifth term. I write down the general term. That thing that was in the sum. So we'll have the binomial coefficient, 11ck. The first term will be to the power, in this case, of 11 minus k. The second power would be k. Now, when I set these up, what I do is I write the binomial coefficient down. I then write the two terms down, but I don't write the powers down. Because in my head, what I do is I say, I know the second one that I write down should be to the power of k. So I write that down first. And then I go, well, I know the two have to add up to give 11. 
so therefore the other one must be 11 minus k. Now we want to find the fifth term. Oh, notice I call my general term k, term k plus 1. Some people call it term k and that changes the formula slightly because then instead of the power of k they have k plus 1 and, but I just find it easier to leave that with k because that's what the general term looks like. Why k term k plus 1? Because the first term would be when I substitute in 0. So it's not like I had the 0th term. So sub in 0 I get term 1. Out of that, some books you will find it slightly different. So 11c4 5a to the power of 7, negative 3 on b to the power of 4 is what I'm looking for because I want the fifth term. Let's work all that out. Well, that would be an unsimplified answer. I haven't worked out what 11c4 is, nor have I worked out 5 to the power of 7 or 3 to the power of 4. Certainly positive, I can work that one out. Negative number to an even power would always be a positive. So that's what we would call an unsimplified answer. To actually work it out, okay. Well, 11c4... We just did that one, didn't we? 330, 5 to the power of 7, 78,125, 3 to the power of 4, 81, and we get this incredibly large number. That's why sometimes we do leave them unsimplified, because the numbers tend to get so large. Sometimes we go, oh, I'll just leave it unsimplified. But be careful, make sure you know what the question's asking, whether you can do that or, or can't do that. What one is the independent term in this? So they haven't actually told you which term to find, as in the fifth term, the sixth term, the seventh term. They're just saying, find the independent one. But again, I don't want to expand the whole thing out. So the first thing I do, write out my general term. The binomial coefficient would be 9ck. The second term, so negative 1 on 2x would be to the power of k. Therefore, the first one, 3x squared, will be 9 minus k. Now, I want the term independent of x. Basically means there is no x in it. Well, therefore, it's x to the power of 0, because x to the power of 0 is 1, and we won't have any x in the answer. So I'm actually not interested in the coefficient at this stage. In this general term, all I'm interested in is the x to the power of. So the first one would be x squared to the power of 9 minus k. The second one, I've put it in index form, would be x to the negative 1 to the power of k. I want that to be x to the power of 0. So now I'm just looking at the powers. So 18 minus 2k, and we add the powers, so minus another k, so 18 minus 3k must equal 0, k is 6. I now know what k is, I can go back and substitute in and work out the coefficients. So we're going to have 9c6, 3x squared cubed, minus 1 on 2x to the power of 6. There's the unsimplified answer. Notice it just asked for the independent term, so I didn't get x to the power of something, which is what we were expecting. I've left it unsimplified. That would be quite an interesting number. What would it be? 9c6, 3 cubed, or well, 2 to the power of 6 is going to be quite large as well. Find the ratio of these ones. But the ratio of the coefficients, again, we're not interested in the algebra because that's obvious. x to the power of 7, x to the power of 5, the ratio is going to be x squared. The ratio is like division. Just the numbers in front I'm interested in. Start with the general term. Notice I've used the alternative notation for the binomial coefficient. And you, you'll see that a bit with these sort of questions. So 15ck, nicely the first number's 1. And 1 to the power of anything is 1, so I don't actually have to worry about that one. But the 2x is to the power of k. So I want the ratio, the coefficient of x to the power of 7, to the coefficient of x to the power of 5. So I'm only interested in the coefficient. So on the top of the fraction, I've got 15c7, 2 to the power of 7. Bottom of the fraction, 15c5, 2 to the power of 5. I'm actually going to go to factorial notation rather than going to a calculator for this one because I actually think it's going to be quicker. Maybe because I'm used to doing it, it's quicker. But 2 to the power of 7 over 2 to the power of 5, obviously that's going to leave 2 squared, so I know that's 4. If I put the others in factorial notation, I see things like, well, 15 factorial is going to cancel with 15 factorial. So that's gone. Now, if I use the idea of always cancelling the bigger one into the top, then I can put the 8 factorial into the 10 factorial. With the other one, because it's on the bottom of the fraction, it's the other way around, the 5 factorial I can put into the 7 factorial. So I'm left with, on the top, 10 times 9, and the 4 we worked out before. On the bottom, the 7 times the 6, and I end up with 60 over 7. Eh, maybe it is quicker on the calculator, but 
Hey, I'm old. I'm used to doing it this way. Okay, look, a couple of exercises on this sort of stuff. So 15C and 15E.